I'm Steve Bayshore, uh, Director of Historic Trades here at Mount Vernon, and I'm standing inside George Washington's reconstructed grist mill. Right here we have a set of millstones uh, which grind corn, but for Washington the key product was wheat and wheat flour. In 1770-71 he built this mill with the eye toward exporting superfine white flour, and it did so for many, many years. However, in 1791, when George Washington's president, he learns of a new patented system designed by a gentleman named Oliver Evans, which greatly improved his grist mill. And we're going to take you through the mill today and learn about this system. Um, our mill is quite unique in the United States today as that we have the only fully functioning Oliver Evans system that is run regularly with flour and grain passing through the system. Uh, it made Washington's mill much more productive and efficient and Oliver Evans himself ends up receiving the third U.S. patent ever given for this unique invention. The way patents worked in the 18th century was uh, quite interesting in that there was no official bureaucracy to approve patents. So part of George Washington's job as president was to sign approved patents. And one day an interesting document crossed his desk, which was the document by Oliver Evans for the automated flour milling system. Uh, Washington read it over and realized how ingenious this was and that he needed it at Mount Vernon. And after signing it and passing it on to Thomas Jefferson for his signature, Washington had Tobias Lear, his private secretary, write to Oliver Evans in Philadelphia requesting that Evans come to Mount Vernon to install the system in his mill. As it happens, Oliver Evans could not get free of business to make the journey south, so he sent his two brothers to Mount Vernon who were millwrights to help retrofit George Washington's mill with the new automated flour milling system. Oliver Ev Evans had received his patent. It actually is U.S. patent number three. Uh, in the line of patents in the early part of our history. And George Washington becomes one of the first men in the early United States to have the newest and finest grist mill innovation. As you enter the mill, uh, you'll see this hole in the floor. It's actually a wheat sink. This is where the grain would enter the mill and enter the new system. It drops down into a large grain bin below called the garner. And that is fed by a, a chute, which is a gravity chute that feeds right down into bucket elevator number one. Oliver Evans is the inventor of the bucket elevator. This is a continuous belt with little cups on it to transport grain vertically in the mill. Uh, this is a labor-saving device and no longer would grain have to be hoisted or carried upstairs to the next level of the process. So the grain would enter the mill, journey up the water-powered elevator, and be dumped into bins on the fourth floor. After receiving it in the bins, the grain would then feed down another sink, which enters a device to clean the grain. This is called the rolling screen. It's basically a way to separate chaff and other debris from your wheat seed. Rolling screens existed long before Oliver Evans in Washington. Undoubtedly would have had a rolling screen in his mill when it was first constructed in 1770. Uh, but now this machine is fed automatically by an elevator instead of human hands. Um, the rolling screen separates out those debris and sends the grain down another long chute directly to the hopper over the millstones. To make export flour, Washington knew he needed the highest quality millstones uh, for this purpose, and he installed in the early period a set of French burr stones. These are freshwater quartz stones quarried along the Marne River outside Paris, and they were used in Europe as early as the 1300s. By the time Virginia is settled, thousands of these millstones are brought into the colonies for making the very best flour, and George Washington knew he needed a set of these to accomplish his goal of export flour. The French stones are able to grind this flour into very fine particles to create white flour. Um, the top stone that's inside this casing rotates, powered by the gearing and the water wheel below. Beneath the upper stone is a stone called the bed stone, which mounts to the floor. It's stationary. It never turns. The grain starts in the hopper and feeds down through the hole in the center stone to be ground into flour. And once again, it goes down a chute by gravity, and it's going to enter elevator number two. Elevator number two then transports this grain back up to the fourth floor where it's dumped out on a large rake or flour cooler known as the hopper boy. This is another part of the Oliver Evans invention. Flour had to be cooled in order to prepare it for sifting. Uh, during grinding the meal can get quite warm. If not properly cooled prior to sifting this flour will have a difficult time making it all the way to market without spoilage. Oliver Evans realized the need for cooling of flour, and so he invented an automatic rake, and he named it the Hopper Boy, named for the young men who used to do this work by hand. The Hopper Boy will rotate, powered by the water wheel. 
and it'll spread and cool the flower gradually, moving it from the outer portion of the circle all the way to the center where it drops down another gravity chute to feed the large sifter known as the bolting chest. Washington's mill would have had a bolting chest in its early period. Bolters were in existence since the 1500s, and George Washington, from the early time, knew he wanted to make export flour, so the bolter was a critical piece of machinery. The bolter is a large reel inside a wooden case that rotates by water power, allowing the flour to sift through silk, known as bolting cloth or silk. This grades the flour into superfine white flour, which was the highest commodity, brought the most value and price. It also makes a fine flour, which we would know today as whole wheat, and it also separates the bran. The bran was not thrown out. It was used to make hardtack biscuit and was sold locally in Alexandria. Right along the river, all the sea captains would purchase, purchase this product and make the hardtack biscuit. So for Washington, the mill produces three products, two overseas and one domestically. The bolting chest is a key piece of equipment. With the Oliver Evans system, it is now fed by very cool flour from the hopper boy. And at the bottom of this machine, the flour then drops down to the appropriate barrel, all ready for packaging and shipping. Again, human hands are not needed to accomplish all this work. So for Oliver Evans, from the beginning of the entrance of the wheat into the mill, transported through the cleaning process, through the millstones, up to be cooled, down through the sifter, and finally into a barrel, it completes the process without the human hands touching the grain. A great innovation and worthy of patent number three. Washington would have had to pay $50 as a licensing fee per pair of stones to run the Evans system. And we know from our records that he selected one set of stones in the mill to be on the Evans system. The other set of stones were in domestic use for his own needs, grinding corn to feed the plantation, grinding oats for livestock feed, grinding rye and barley, and particularly in the later years as he builds his whiskey distillery, the mill is critical to that process as well.